Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Quasimorph, shall we? So, we're here at the system map, and from this point, Jane is telling us that this is a map of the solar system, and we can see which missions are available in different areas, and how much time it will take to travel from one point to another. So over on the left, for example, you can see the planets, the moons on those planets, and then the number is how many missions are available um, in that area and how long it will take to get there. Uh, right now, to deliver the PCPU with quasi-morphic research to ANTCOM, we need to go to Mars. So they want us to go to Mars right here. So we can click on Mars and it'll, it's going to tell us that the travel time from Phobos to Mars is 16 hours. Whereas, you know, the travel time to the moon um, on Earth, for example, is 11 days. So we're going to just click back here. And you can see when you click on one of these locations, Mars has one mission. And over in the upper right, it shows you what's going on in Mars, and the mission is the yellow one here, whereas the moon has, you could see, three yellow missions to do. So we will go to Mars, and we'll just click Start Travel. We can terminate orbit, sir. Confirm charge and go. And so this is going to move us around. Your guidance has converged. You are looking good. Roger. In. Choose the Rebus Sky City to visit. It's a peaceful station, so there's no need to equip the operative who will go there. Also, when we send clones to perform barter, we load all the items into the shuttle, so there's no need to make multiple trips if something is forgotten. When you're ready, take the PCPU with research and send it to the operative. Now, this mission makes more sense with the old trading system in place, but with the new trading system, you don't often need to go into the space station to really deliver or talk to people uh, but this is how we're going to do it here so this is where they want us to go rebus sky city you'll see this is in green and this is an orbital city it's not a mission it's a location it's peaceful it's owned by ancom um, you can see its technology level how much it's growing per week its power level and uh, these are the items down below the required items that they will trade for so we're going to click on this and we can select stuff uh, to auto trade. And so I can just click on this right arrow. And you can see here is the printed circuit board. And here is the secret data. So actually, never mind. They didn't change the text. But uh, at this point, they no longer require you to go aboard and deliver this. You can just do it from the quick trade menu. Now, that's because I have quick trade enabled. If you did not enable that, then you will walk aboard and you know, find the NPC and, and put it into their stockpile. But here, we're just going to exchange it. And the professor says, Good work, mercenary. If you need contracts, we regularly distribute them through the SBN channels. Work for us and you will become rich. But if you stand in our way, the consequences will be dreadful. I hope we understood each other. Oh, okay, yeah, that's great. Very friendly. I can't stand these corporates. Boss, what's next? It seems like you and Frank have satisfied your sense of justice. We're free now. There's chaos all over the system. Taking advantage of the sudden appearance of Quasimorphs, the corporations have reshuffled the market. Stations change owners almost every day. Tez, who seems to favor us for its awakening, is squeezing the corporations on Venus. Civil resistance has been showing some furious activity around Mars. Maybe we should continue fighting against them if we get paid for it. There's no quasi-morphosis there, so it would be easier. And this is her tip to you, which is fantastic, and we're going to take it. Which is that if we are around Mars, we at least don't have to contend with quasi-morphosis. So we say continue. Now, this is what we got for completing the mission. We got a basic item chip, which allows us to make the smuggler armor. We got a fighter military backpack, so another 6x3, great. We got some rifle ammo. We got an assault rifle. We got a 
gun repair kit, armor repair kit, and some 9mm EXP ammunition. So we will say awesome and just push this left arrow to kind of bring it all on board and we can return to our ship. So if we want to do this um, red Tiangong conquest mission, you can see that the owner is Corward MG and the beneficiary is Daydream and um, this is the time remaining to do this. So some quests are time, this one is. And I was told that two skull difficulty actually does not mean it's not a rating system of difficulty, which is what I thought and how that is handled in many games, but rather how many floors you will need to fight. And then the reward is reflective of the value that you will get. And then really, if you want to check how difficult it will be, you can look at... I think this is the way to do this. You can look at Corward MG over here, and you can see um, their information on their technology level. So their 1.0 and their power level. So this kind of gives you an indication of how tough it will be as their tech level. Whereas, like, um, for example, Realware um, has a higher power, and then... They're all actually pretty similarly based, but then Tez has 2.0, so they're more difficult. And then we don't want to necessarily mess with them. And then also, if we look at... Oops. Uh, the owner... The beneficiary is Daydream. So if we go to Daydream, you can see that these are the rewards that we might get. So, uh, you know, we could possibly get an item chip, 24%. We also might get some, you know, uh, shotgun stuff, which is great. Like, who wouldn't want a really nice shotgun? They also have uh, these toxic needle guns, if you're interested. So, I'm going to say, pretty cool. But you can also go around here and click, for example, see if you have anything that you want to trade with these stations by just clicking if you're not sure what's in your inventory and seeing if that arrow lights up. So for example, right here, I could trade this defibrillator right here and get 79 in value from uh, the network uh, or, or from SBN rather. So if we go over to SBN, what do they give us? Oh, okay. They could give us some okay stuff. You know, we could get maybe an item chip or something. So we'll definitely just trade it. And we got energy ammo, which is not like the best because we don't really use energy weapons at the moment. But if we did, that would be really good. Energy ammo is energy weapons are, in my experience, pretty nice. And um, the ammo is not always the easiest to find. So that's pretty cool. All right. So we're going to select our operative operator here and we're going to go Victoria again. Now she's already loaded out. You can see what equipment she has, but we might need to change her kit a bit. So let's see what we've got. We have a food, we have these shotgun shells, and we have some 9mm bullets. But I'm going to click sort on cargo to go down here and see... Uh, oh, first of all, um, you need to right-click the, the chip in your inventory and say unlock chip, and we got the smuggler. There you go. And let's see. I have a little bit of ammo but not much so that alarms me because I don't have very many shotgun bullets available however let's see um, I'm going to take some food and then I'm okay with my healing items But I'm going to return. I'm going to return. I'm going to go into my craft. You see, I'm making bullets. So I need to wait two hours before I get these bullets. And can I make some more bullets? I need powder. So to get that, we'd need to break apart uh, some other bullets. So we'd have to just say, okay, um, disassemble you know, these 
bullets, that stack of 9mm bullets right there. And then we can go over here and we can go back to crafting. And we can indeed make um, buckshot. I'll make everything. It's going to take a day to finish that. And then if you really want shotgun bullets, you can just kind of queue it up again. But we only have three um, powder remaining. So that'll be done in two hours. So let's see. You can just speed up time up here, and then now it's done. So I'm going to go... Do you remember, the only real thing, like, concerning-wise for time is the deadline on certain quests. So I'm going to go do my spacecraft, and now if I go... Actually, I don't need to. I can just go here, and then I could click Operator Victoria, and then... Yes, yes, this is all good. I'm going to go back to Equipment, though, and we're going to sort... And then now we should be able to find um, a whole bunch of bullets, which we do, and we're going to take them. So now I feel good about having a shotgun and having enough bullets to finish the mission. Is there anything that I feel like I'm missing defensively, offensively? I mean, not really. I think this is fine. There's 10 seconds left before landing. Clearing the station for capture is methodical work. Move slowly as soon as the security guard or PMCs guarding Red Tiang realize the battle is lost, they will retreat. Usually it's enough to destroy 50% of the combatants. Keep an eye on the indicators, but if you feel you have enough strength and supplies, then you can explore the place. Other than capture, nothing else is included in the contract, and the customer will accept Red Tiangong anyway. Um... Well, traditionally, welcome to the world of healthy and fair competition. So what this means is, on a mission such as this, we need to eliminate 50% of the baddies on the um, each floor that is available to us. So if I were to ask her right now and just push T, she tells me right now, um, on there's three floors, so... Um, I don't know. Maybe Red Skulls mean... People were telling me in the comments that they aren't difficulty, that they mean how many floors. Maybe it's like... There was two Red Skulls, so maybe it's two plus one. Um, so there's always one floor. So you each Red Skull adds another, or I don't know how it exactly scales. But you can see that there's three floors. Now we know that we need to kill at least ten targets on this floor. And then if you get to the other floor then she starts to be able to refine the data and give you a more precise number. So we're going to go down here. And um, I'm going to face this way. And, okay, here's a workbench. Now sometimes you see how there's a workbench right there on the station. You could then... Um, a saw blade bat. That's pretty sweet. You could, like, bring powder and craft things instantly at the workbench, I think, but not everything you can make at the workbench. Right, I'm gonna disassemble that. Okay, so here is a scanner. Let's see what we got. Um, we're gonna use it because now we can fill in um, the items in the bad guys. You can see where they are. That's very useful. This is all empty. All right, there's a baddie. Oh, boy. Okay. So part of my problem right there was that I found the bad guy, but I believe I only had one action left, and so I fired, and then they got to retaliate and hit me. Um, which is a shame. Oh, no, they missed. We're okay. Alright, so there is a bad guy up there. But... I'll just wait for them to get a little bit closer so I can shoot them. This is another bad guy. It's a robot. So, um... It's an autonomous robot. These guys are real jerks. They usually have insane armor. Um, like, they 
poison, fire, not going to do much against them. Uh, they have good blunt resistance. So, I'm just going to reload, wait for this guy to get here. And I'm going to go on, um, uh, I'm going to switch my, oh, okay, I have to wait. There we go. I'm going to switch to uh, Burst Fire. And lay that guy down. Okay. And let me just check. Yep. Oh, there's a bunch of guys. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. Reload. I'm using a lot of bullets. But there's so many bad guys coming. Now, if I go to the map, remember, I have all of this stuff tracked. So, I could kind of see... Um, these are dead bodies, but there's two livings. Um, I'm going to kind of go behind the cover and just wait. This is out of my optimal range. I could take a shot. Oh, okay, I killed him. All right, so floor one is cleared. Now, when I first did one of these missions with the 50%, I thought it was like just you could kill 50% on floor one for the entire base, and then you'd be good. So I was like, well, let's just focus on this floor, but it doesn't actually work like that. So the way that it works is 50% on every floor. So we're going to have to go through and clean this place out, which we will. Oh, I don't want all that fuel. I mean, that's amusing. Thank you. Okay, here. Unload the ammo from this. And pick up that. That's good. Alright. Okay. Okay. I do want these bullets. So it's time to start dropping stuff that I don't care about. And I want water just in case. Alright, here's the elevator. Cool. There's some plastic if we wanted. I don't really care about that. Um, entertainment literature. Gun Bang Magazine. People will pay well for acid as also. Um... Okay. So now we have to start dropping stuff. And we're going to go to floor two. Check it out. And there's a robot. So for robots, I'm going to switch to a bigger... Oh gosh. Okay, that happened. Well, we leveled up CQC spe or specialist and training at the same time, it looked like. I'm going to switch over to the regular fire. I'm going to reload. And let's see what you got here in this toolbox. Oh, there's a guy. They're on fire. They're dead. Um, I can't really hit them very easily. I don't know. They're just going to, what, stand there and burn? All right, I'm not going to shoot. Right, let's see if they change their positioning. They should come around. Yep. Okay. All right. We put them out of their misery. So this toolbox is a container. You can open it to get stuff, or we can keep it to try to sell it, which is what we're going to do. Ooh, grenade launcher. Sweet. Nothing like shooting grenades at people. I do like this. I don't have the space for it, but we might want one. It's not in great condition. What I'll do is I'll start shifting things around so that we can take it. Oh, okay. 
Oh! They got me. It was because I took that shot right there. If I would have just waited... You no, know, I needed to step back. So that they couldn't move and attack. Anyway. Um, we got a laceration here, so... I'm going to just use a rag because it's cheap. And see if we can fix it with that. I got shanked. How about that? Okay, a lot of, a lot of baddies. I'm just going to go here. I don't know if they'll come around. Yeah, they will. Time to reload. Now I'm going to put as many of these bullets onto my vest as I can. Let's talk to our buddy. And we need to kill three more targets on this floor. No problem. There's one right now. Cool. Bandage. Oh, I can't. I'm going to stabilize my wound. So I can't use it because the wound's already been stabilized. I have a stomach laceration. I'm still bleeding. But in three turns, I have a 60% chance to recover because of the bandaging that I did. So I'm going to walk up here. And blast that guy. There we go. Now that's enough. So we've now done enough work. Here's a submachine gun. If we want it, we can, of course, um, you know, get rid of something if we want. But honestly... Um, I'm going to use this to fix my shotgun a little bit. The firearm parts that we got from disassembling that. Alright. And oh my god, that's skin. Oh dear. Alright. So here's a baddie. Uh-oh. I got to get away from that fuel barrel. And then... Oh god. Okay. So... We got hit by this fire. We got burned. So what I'm going to do is go to my health screen and I'm going to put a rag on it. We need to eat. Alright. Um, I don't think there's anybody still there, right? I'm just going to wait, pushing spacebar, letting the fire die out. That's why I moved away from that barrel. <laughs> Remember, you could take the fuel out of the barrel so that doesn't happen. Oh, great. There's bullets. That's amazing. Unload ammo. What do you have? Okay, they have um, regular shotgun. That's fine. All right. Alright, let's go over here. Uh-oh. Okay. So, actually, I don't know. That guy is probably going to follow me, but... Over there, out in this... Oh! Okay. Yes, they're following me, and they're devastating me. So, I have to kill this thing. I was going to just walk away. Okay, I'm going to go back to single fire mode. I was going to walk away because this is not the way to the elevator. And I don't need to fight these guys. Um, we're okay, though. We got hit, but I think they actually didn't do any damage or they just missed us slightly or something. A um, bunch of stuff I dropped. Okay. Now we are taking damage um, from this knee wound. So I'm going to actually just bandage it. 
Man. Okay, this is also not the right way. Now, we can go here and get experience and stuff, but the issue is we're going to be wasting a lot of supplies. Take me over here instead. Well. Maybe I did want to go that way. Aw. I thought behind the cover I was about to be okay. No, I'm okay. Uh, here's an automatic shotgun. Which is really cool, but um, I'm going to just take the ammo and probably disassemble this. There's nothing wrong with an automatic shotgun. It's great, but right now I just don't... Like, it's going to chew through all of my ammunition. Is what I feel like. But maybe it's the, you know, a better gun. Okay, that guy, that robot, finally, he did follow me all the way. He's nothing if not persistent. I'm just going to wait for him to get a little closer. Change fire mode. There we go. Got it. Nails. He was carrying... Nails. There's a police baton. If you want to hit people in the head. Nope, nope, nope. Not the right elevator. Go over here. That's the elevator I came in on. There it is. Alright, let's go. Floor three. Okay, now let's see. Can she tell me now the number? Ten. Okay. All right. Batty. Oh, God. I don't know how I missed this guy. I mean, I guess the cover from the corner, but that seems like a strange situation. All right. Um, they have noodles, so we'll eat these. And they have a, you know, blunt weapon repair kit, which is good for their crowbar, but not really great for us. Uh-oh. Oh, God. I didn't see it. It's a dangerous tile. Yeah, that was my mistake. Okay. So, I thought it would be more green. Like, you can see it's kind of reddish, but it... You notice how it says dangerous tile. That was, um, I thought I would be able to stand on that, but I was not. So we got ourselves uh, poisoned with a foot chemical burn, and um, we're in bad shape. So we need to immediately fix this. So I'm going to try to bandage that. I don't know if that's going to do anything good for us, um, but we're going to pray. And then we can um, use the first aid kit to get rid of poisoning. So I'm going to use this. And, um, we still have some poisoning, which, what, is it happening because of me? I'll try to splint that, and then, um, I'm gonna go to my inventory. I'm gonna use this. I just have a chemical burn on my foot. And it still didn't fix it. 
Chance of recovery, 50%. No. Chance of recovery, 0%. Um, I wonder if I take off my shoes. No. Um, I mean... I keep healing myself. But it keeps overwriting. Okay, let's see if that'll stick. The poison could have just been spreading in that room, which is why it kept hitting me, but I'm not sure. Alright, so there's a target over there. And they're a little bit far away, but let's get behind cover. Well, no, it doesn't work. They don't know that I'm here, but they do now. Okay, there's a bunch of cool stuff over here. I'm going to take cover behind this chair. Okay, I'm about to die. So, we need four targets left, basically. Um, okay, I'll eat this. Three. All right, here we go. <laughs> I set myself up for that with the move and shoot. They did not hit me, I don't think. Oh, no, they did. It's minor. Okay. Here they come. Let's just space, space. Oh, the door closed. That's a shame. I'll wait, let them open it. It's automatic. Automatic door. Okay. So now enough of them are dead. Let's just try to get out of here. Um, our foot finally healed itself. So we didn't die, but you see how bad that was. That is how brutal poison can be. Chemical burns. Mm. Alright, this is a room full of bad guys if you see the demon symbol on the floor. I'm just kind of coming through. You don't have to worry about this kind of a room as much in uh, on Mars, but it's not ideal. Now, she's flashing because she's like, you're done, and then we need to get to the elevator. Okay, let's go back to the elevator. Let's just move here. All right, so we're gonna go evacuation. We did it. So, um, they signed the, digitally signed the sale declaration. We beautifully executed the acquisition deal. Yep, by murdering them to scare them away. So what reward do we get? Just scroll down on your cargo. We got the toxic needle gun, which is unfortunate. I didn't want that. Um, but we did get, look at this, um, a tactical axe and uh, the production item for 12-gauge ammunition. So we can unlock the chip, and we can unlock the chip. So now we can make more stuff. Like, we got some new uh, recipes, which is terrific. So uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to control this over. Anything that I don't need with this character. I'm just going to move it over. I don't need that many bullets. This is good. 
finished mission. Okay, so what we saw there with that mission was me almost die because um, it was a weird circumstance where I did something that normally the game wouldn't really want you to do, but I was trying to stand on the body, so I control move to stand on that body, which is how you move onto a square with a tile without looting it. But it was a dangerous square, and I think you needed to actually do that to move on to it. It was trying to pr protect me from stepping into the poison, so I ended up doing it. And they gave us a good demonstration. I have died like that before, where you get poisoned and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just, you have to get it healed, and even if you heal your body of the poisoning, that wound was devastating our health. And a lot of the items that you have for restoring your health don't actually... They help you stabilize the wound, and they might provide some regeneration, but we needed more water to just kind of have a way to quickly get some health back or some different restorative items that instantly do give you some health. But we made it. It was difficult, but we made it. So you got to be really careful. Whenever you see those green barrels um, or even the red barrels, as you saw, like the fire goes really far away, and it is hard to deal with. So you got to be very careful around those things. And if you do get poisoned, you have to make sure you heal the poison from your body and try to stabilize that wound as soon as you can. But we made it. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.